In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a cash flow forecast. So here's an Excel spreadsheet open already. So first of all, I'm going to type in a business name. I'm going to call this small business to you. And then I'm going to give it a heading of cash flow forecast 2018. Next, I want to put in the headings for the each of the months. So I'm going to start this in January 2018. 18 and it's very easy just to copy those across click on the little black box and copy them across and it will show you that what month you're up to to so I'm going to take that through to December and there I'm going to then enter the total so that'll be the total of my cash flows and notice that these automatically write justified so I'm going to write justify the total to make it look consistent so my first heading is going to be cash Flows. I'm going to enter my sales, bank loan, and then owner balances. As this is a new business, and the owner is going to be entering money into the business. So to notice that these um, headings have gone over the cell. So to change that, you can either click and drag, or if you double click on that, it'll open up to the right size. It'll take it to the widest. So in fact, actually what this has done is it's taken to the widest of the actual heading here. So now I've got that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to center both of these. And if you highlight all the cells where you want to center it, and then click on Merge and Center, and I'm going to bolden that. And I'm going to do the same with the title too. Merge and bolden. One other thing I'm going to actually do, I'm going to show you how you insert a line if you've missed one out. If you right click the row and then click insert. So I'm going to put in some pound signs across here. If, of course, if you're in America and using dollars, just put a dollar sign. But I'm going to right justify that as well so it looks consistent. And then I'm just going to copy that across. I'm going to miss a line and then I'm going to have my total. And then I'm going to have a next heading of my cash out flows. So the headings I've got here is equipment purchases. Then I've got loan payments. So the loan that's going to be taken out. Goods. Sale. Some advertising costs. Then I've got my merchant fees. Sounds, postage, costs, station, okay. Always remember the spelling of that one. It's not A R Y, it's E R Y. Something I struggle with always. Your telephone, costs, costs. Uh, website, internet fees. I'm going to enter overdraft in terms two, which I'll explain later got my owner's drawings. This align and then I've got my total cash. That goes. Misalign. Then I've got my net inflows and outflows. So that's going to be the difference between, or the net of the inflow, total inflows and cash outflows. So I'm going to misalign. Then I've got my if you prefer, you can always put the opening balance at the top, but I always prefer to have my opening and closing balances at the bottom. I'm going to put my closing balance there. And now I'm going to start entering some numbers, but I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit. So where I've missed lines, I think these are too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight them all. You can either change each one individually, or you can change them all at the same so they're all consistent. So if you select the first one and then hold down your control button or key and then select the other lines that you want to change and you could change this one too which I'll come on to in a minute why and then go back up to the first one and right click it and then you'll see there's a heading there called row height click on row height and then you can type in what you want to change it to so the existing row height which we'll show you is 15 and I'm going to take that down to 5 
I'm also going to do a bit of text editing here. So I'm going to bolden my headings here. So my cap total, my heading of cash inflows, my total of cash inflows, my heading of cash outflows, total of cash outflows, the net of the both of those, my opening balance and closing balance. Now down the bottom here, I'm going to have a running total of my stock ins and outs. And this will become clear as I put these numbers in here. We're going to here number of sales, number of purchases. This is taking on the boldening above, so I'm going to switch that off. Net sales slash purchases, and then closing stock. So first of all, what I'm going to do to enter my numbers, I'm going to put in that my, each of my sales is going to be worth £300. I'm going to put that in this column here. So I'm going to do a couple of formulas for you, just to show you how you can do formulas. I'm going to assume also that I don't make any sales in the first month of January, but in the second month, by like February 18, I make two sales. So what I can then do is I can, if I enter a plus sign of my keyboard, so plus, I'm going to plus this cell here, which is the £300. And notice in the box up here, it's saying plus B6, and that's cell B, or column B, and it's row 6. Now I want to fix that because I'm going to be copying those across. And a quick way to fix that, if you press your F4 key, Notice what happens. It puts a dollar sign. Don't worry too much about why that happens. That fixes it. So when you copy it across, it fixes that cell. And then going to times that by the number of purchases, which of course in January 18 was none. I'm going to copy that all the way across. And then I'm going to put in my other sales. So I'm going to assume in March I sold five, April I sold eight, ten in May. 11 in June and then I'm going to increase these by two a month then plus so plus that cell plus two and then copy that across and notice how each one of these cells is adjusted accordingly and then I'm going to do a total a total app but when you hit the auto sum it'll automatically think for you and it'll go across and total all those up but of course I don't want to include this column here so I'm going to override that. So I only want January 18 through to December 18. That gives me my total. Copy that down. And now that I've got those totals in there, I can put my sum of my total cash inflows. And I'm going to format that with a, a two lines, one above and one below. Copy that across. I'm going to enter a couple of other cash inflows. So first of all, I'm going to enter a bank loan. And I'm going to assume also that the owner puts in £2,000 in January and then further advance of £1,000 from the owner as well. So now I can move on to my cash outflows. So I've got equipment purchases, I'm going to assume in January. And if you want to put any notes in here to explain what it is at a later stage, if you right click the cell and insert a comment, you can then type in what that is. So I'm going to say that that's a laptop computer. You can adjust the size of that. Okay. So if you then hover over that, it'll show you what that actually is. So notice a little uh, red triangle in the corner of the cell. So I'm going to assume my loan repayments start in February, the month after the loan was received. I'm going to assume they're £75 a month. So now my goods for resale I'm going to assume that these cost me £150. So on the same basis that when I am I entered down here when I was selling them, I'm going to put down here the number of purchases. I'm going to assume that in January I buy 15, March I buy 20. I'll fill those in out in a minute. And then my net number of goods, so I'm going to be minusing sales plus purchases, format that. And then my closing stock will be that. Copy those across. And my closing stock will be previous month plus the movement in that one. Copy those across. And now notice that I've got my stock as a positive through here. So I'm going to put in another 
purchase of stock to keep the stock in positive because in June 18 it goes to a negative which of course it can't be the case because you can't sell stock that you don't have so I'm going to put in 25 in there and then I'm going to enter 30 there just to keep these in a positive so I'm buying them in the month before and then I'm going to put in 40 there and another 30 there so that we are consistently keeping stock on hand. So now I'm going to put in my purchases. So like we did with sales, I'm going to add the 150. That's sell there. I'm going to fix it again. So F4 times by the number of purchases. I'm going to copy that across again. And then notice that the purchases only appear in the months where you've entered the number of purchases. And that's automatically taking 20 times 150 and so on. I also need to enter a total in here, so I'm going to do auto sum again, and that's automatically taking it all the way through to January 18, and then I can copy that down to there. You also want to then put in my total of cash outflows, auto sum that, and put lines, I can then start to enter my other numbers, so my net inflows and outflows so i'm going to add my inflows that's my outflows i'm going to assume because this is a starting startup business that my open balance is zero and my closing balance will be plus my opening plus my net inflows and outflows and my next month's opening will be my previous month's closing and then my closing and balance copy those through and the total my opening balance I have to add the original opening balance and just format that with some underlines and then I'm going to put in some extra numbers in here so I've got some advertising which I'm going to assume is £150 per month copy that through my merchant fees I'm going to assume is £1.50 per sale so again we can use the formula because we've got our sales here so I'm going to add that and fix it using F4 times the number of sales, which is zero in January 18, but it will automatically multiply those up for the number of sales in the following months. Postage costs, I'm going to assume that each time we send one out it costs us five pounds. So again I'm going to do plus that, fix it, times the number of sales. Copy that across. I'm going to assume that in January 18 we buy some paper, paper clips, pens, pencils etc and then in July we buy another £50 worth. Telegram I'm going to assume is £50 a month. I'm just going to copy that one across. Website fees I'm going to put in £25 a month. I'll skip overdraft interest for the minute and then I've got owner's drawings and then for the first couple of months I'm going to assume that the owner doesn't withdraw these because there's not sufficient funds but by April he's starting to take out £500 for the next three months and then that increases to £750 per month. That's your straightforward cash flow forecast and you'll see going along the bottom that our closing balance stays positive all the way through. In fact it starts to increase nicely towards the end of the first 12 month period. Now were we to enter another equipment purchase let's say we wanted to buy a printer and various other office bits and pieces maybe some furniture and so on and let's put in say 1500 pounds in there you'll notice that a couple of these months the closing balance goes into a negative so that means that we've got an overdraft so it might mean that we need to arrange an overdraft facility so then you would have to enter an amount in here and i'm going to just assume that for each time we go overdrawn, it's going to cost us £10. So I'm going to put in £10 there, and again we go overdrawn there, £10 there. That's it for showing you our cash flow forecasts. This is for a 12 month period. If you want any help on that, please contact us. Well, we do sell a much more, I'll say, sophisticated cash flow forecasting software, which not only takes account of your cash flow forecasts, but you'll also be provided with profit loss forecasts, a cash flow statement, projected balance sheets and so on. Because there's obviously a difference between what's shown on your cash flow forecast and what shows on your 
profit and loss forecast, particularly if you're registered for VAT and particularly where you take time to pay your suppliers because the amount included in the profit and loss account will be when the amount is incurred a net of VAT, but the amount included on your cash flow forecast will be gross of VAT and when the amounts are actually paid and when the amounts are received. But this will give you a basic cash flow forecast, but if you need to contact us or to take a look at our cash flow software, please go across to bowraven.com. This is Russell Bowyer and thank you for listening.